Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the negative mind, all of those negative thoughts that we have uh, that creep up. And um, I've been watching my mind a lot lately and thinking about um, the nature of the negative mind. It started because I had the opportunity to go to Hawaii uh, with a friend and all of her friends. And in that trip to Hawaii, um, this friend of mine is very positive. And so all of her friends were very positive minded people, just always focusing on the positive. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I feel like I've died and gone to heaven, like such heavenly thoughts. It was so delightful. It was sweet. Um, and so each day I became more aware of of like, wow, I don't, I don't have a positive mind wired up like these people do. It's fantastic. And so the, the first day I was there, I, I took a trip to the beach and, um, and they called and they're like, oh, just so you know, the, the rain is coming in about five minutes. I'm like, it looks great here. I don't think the rain's coming. It's fine. And I'm like, just sitting there on the lava rock. And then five minutes later, it's like a torrential downpour. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. So the next morning I wake up and everyone's like, it's a beautiful day outside. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. And they're like, what? <laughs> what was that? I was like, well, the data that I have from yesterday is that it could be sunny one minute and rain in the next. So I'm just going to wait to decide whether I deem this, whether I judge this day as a, as a sunny day. And they cracked up. They're like, oh my God. And so we spent a week really studying each other's mind, them studying my negative mind because I'm a pleasant person generally and I'm happy and I'm content, but I have a very wired negative mind and they are lovely and very positive and joyful to be around. But what I realized is that where I got uncomfortable is in the evenings where I wanted to talk about what's not working in life. I wanted to dig in. My negative mind wanted to problem solve where things in this world need to improve or what is really underneath that for you or for me, um, which wasn't there because I realized that that comes from my negative mind. That willingness to go into the fear and sniff out the fear, that willingness to really go deep into the experience and really discern what's not yet right about the experience. So that put me onto this track of just watching what makes up a negative mind. Is a negative mind bad? What do you do with a negative mind? What if it's an unruly negative mind? So I've had this frozen shoulder. You may have heard me talking about it because I don't do well with physical pain or discomfort. I can take whatever emotional, mental situation you throw at me, I can, I can process it. I mean, I'm not telling the universe to send me anything major. I feel like, I, but I can handle those things. Physical pain, not so much. So I'm at the PT yesterday. And she's like, so tell me about your body. Like, you know, where did this problem start? And where did this problem start? And next thing you know, this whole deluge of all of the history of my fascia and my pregnancies and what I can't do and what I had to stop doing and all of this like negative perspective on my body started to flow out. And there was a point after it started to spew that I was sitting there listening and going, God, Kim, wow, listen to your beliefs about your body. Listen to what you think about your body. This is the program that's running. 
in your body, which is probably why frozen shoulder is going to take a year instead of six months to heal because your divine perfect body is working against a belief system of physical trauma. When I injured myself in yoga, when I hurt my ribs in pregnancy, when I this, when I that, physical body trauma. So when we think about the negative mind and switching the negative mind, people will often think, well, I have to think positive. What is the opposite of negative? How do I get myself thinking positively? Right? That's the natural. And that's why there's a gazillion happiness books on the market. How to get happy. What's the opposite of depression? It's being happy. What's the opposite of anxiety, it's being joyful. I mean, this is typically the governing belief in our society is we need to get over here in this camp. If you're over here in the negative emotion or negative thoughts about life. And I just wanna talk about the mental body here. So if I'm thinking negatively, then the antidote is to think positively. So people adopt positive affirmations and they try to turn their thoughts upside down or right side up. Here's the problem. Neither the people who had the positive thoughts at that week retreat, nor the person with the negative thoughts at that week long retreat in Hawaii were seeing the fullness of any situation. And so what we want is to not only see life from negative, obviously, or positive. We need to be able to see the fullness of it and be okay within ourselves, no matter what's happening. Without the mental body making a judgment that rain is bad and sun is good. Without the mental body making a judgment that my fascia or my joints should be acting in any specific way. So my job isn't to take all those negative thoughts about my physical history and change them and see myself as perfectly healed and having fascia that doesn't have a problem because my inner knowing is going to be like, mm, bullshit. That's not true. And that's why it doesn't work to go from negative to flip it over to positive because what's left is this gray area of what's true. And in inner alignment work, when we're taking someone through eight weeks of healing from trauma, we're not trying to flip them into the positive after they've had a lifetime of really horrible things happen to them. It's not realistic to do that. It's not real to do that. It would be spiritually bypassing to love and light our way away from the pain that is still stored in the body and living as truth in the present moment. So then how do we get to the space of, of transmuting the negative? And while transmuting is like, it may, let me back up. Let's not say transmuting. How do I balance the negative first before I transmute it? Because we don't want to transmute it because there is some real truth to be gleaned. The people that we see, if you go back to the toxic relationships um, YouTube video that I did, is the people that we see in abusive relationships are the people who have too strong of a positive mind. Meaning they were only taking in what works. They were spiritually bypassing. They were seeing only the soul qualities in the person. And so they were seeing life through this really small lens and not allowing themselves to see, um, but he's abusive and he's mean and uh, he hurt me, <laughs> right? 
So negative mind is a really valuable aspect that was built into our physical human experience, allowing us to stay dry when it's raining, allowing us to stay safe in relationship, allowing us to hear a story and say, "Mm, there might be more to this or allowing us to look at what's not working so we can improve or or learn. So the negative mind is actually an incredibly valuable aspect of our human mind. And every single one of the spiritual modalities that are teaching us to not think negatively are to are essentially telling us that we're not human. So how do we take this very human wiring to keep us safe and to keep us in good relationships and to keep us weeding out the situations that aren't good and only keeping the situations that are good and helping us to determine where we want to spend our time and where we need to set boundaries and what kind of truths need to be expressed, even though they're hard and they won't land well, and uh, allowing us to evaluate how we haven't gotten to the, to the wisdom that we want to or the spiritual connection that we want to. So it's gleaning from the negative mind of that which we are not yet. And only the negative mind can really go there. So to have this on board, but to have it in check, to have it balanced with positive mind. So yeah, I've had some fascial trauma and ripping and lack of cohesion and hypermobility and spasming and freezing of joints and all of these things in my body. That is true. And I live a really normal life. And it's gotten me so connected to being in right relationship with myself, that my body has essentially been the mechanism that has me grounding my vata and connecting to the divine so I can transmute, not transcend, but transmute that which feels stuck within me. And with both the positive and the negative, I can be more neutral about my body. And so what if the point of life is not to be happy and to only think positive thoughts, but to actually get to a place of neutrality so that we are never in one camp or the other. We are always able to see the all of it so that we can live in right relationship with ourselves. What does that mean, right relationship with ourselves? So many people I work with have trauma, a weak root chakra with vata imbalance, air imbalance in their constitution. And they go through positive mind. I want to travel here. I want to do this. They have all of these thoughts about themselves, these positive thoughts and these really optimistic views of what their body can do. And then at the end of the trip, they're toast. And they're depressed or they're burnt out or they're, they got into a fight or whatever. And as someone that can kind of pan out and watch this, I think, oh, well, negative mind didn't plan into your trip. When we're planning, we're usually only using positive mind. But what if negative mind was right there and you were like, and by week day three, I'm going to be exhausted and a piece of toast. So I'm going to plan in a grounding day where I don't have to be around anyone and they go off on their excursions. So I am caring for myself. That's what negative mind does. So imagine if both positive mind and negative mind were so so securely intact, neither one better than the other, such that we walk around life with both perspectives, allowing ourselves to truly honor the soul and the potential of our healing and all the juicy good stuff. And 
the reality of what past data has shown us. So when I said, I don't trust that it'll be sunny today, it's not because I felt betrayed by the weather. It's because I'm still building the database of Hawaii weather. So what if we stopped making it about um, a personalization, meaning a personalization of my body is broken and I am a mess, or a personalization of any situation, and we really just saw it more objectively based on the data patterns that we have. Like data shows that he might be abusive in the future because we have all of these data points in the past where he was abusive. Is that negative or is it really projecting data patterns from the past into the future? Unless a major transformation has taken place between the past and the future, chances are people are very consistent. So what you can, ex what, what happened in the past will project or tra traject into the future. So negative mind allows us to look at those patterns and be like, okay, we can project positive in the future for this trip that I'm about to go on. Or we can look at the data points of what is and what has happened in the past and use those data points to plan through our negative mind what needs to happen in order for this trip to be something that is comfortable and grounded and emotionally nourishing. neutral mind. Yeah, this trip is going to be great. And there are going to be some aspects of this trip that are going to be hard. How do I use my self-compassion and the data about myself to plan this trip so that negative mind is on board? So what if negative mind's not bad? What's bad is when negative mind runs the show unconsciously. So let's talk about that because that's really what people are talking about is when I'm um, looking at a spouse or a, an in-law and all that's running is negative mind on that person. And I actually believe the negative thoughts about that person that are running through my mind or the negative thoughts about myself. So let's say I'm going on a trip and I'm going to see someone and I've got lots of negative thoughts and lots of negative data on that person. And I'm projecting the worst because I have lots of data on the worst. Are we stuck with that? Are we stuck with those negative thoughts? What's interesting is those of us who are empathic aren't even just working with our own data set. Let's say I have beef with someone I'm about to go on a trip with. I can empathically feel their beef with me. Right? So it doesn't feel made up in my head. It feels like the absolute truth. So now we're talking about pain bodies. Now we're talking about interference energy. Now we're talking about lineage karma. So what does that mean as it relates to my negative mind? So let's say my, neg my mind is wired to be negative, but I have it balanced now. So even when the shitty thing is happening with my daughter, I'm held in the grace of gratitude because I've wired gratitude into my mind, right? So I've wired my positive mind and my gratitude and my pure honor and, and feeling safe and good in the present moment. So our negative minds need to be balanced with a healthfully wired positive mind so that when the shitty thing happens, it catches us. Like almost in every negative experience I have, my negative mind will go, go like all into it. And I will be held 
by such sacred gratitude for how worse this could be and how blessed I am in this situation. So that goes to the wiring of our mental body. If we have a negative mind, have we wired in sufficient beliefs that the divine has me and I'm capable and I'm safe and good things happen even when bad things are happening? We have the actual circuitry of the mind needs to be balanced. And once we have the capacity to hold both, when a pain body or interference energy or a lineage karma pattern comes in like a big tsunami and takes over the mind such that we can't reach the positive mind, do we have enough awareness when we're caught up in the negative thoughts that those aren't my thoughts? Those aren't my thoughts. So I get triggered. It always happens with my daughter. I was given three daughters because I asked for enlightenment in this lifetime. I truly believe that. And so I was given three mirrors of my shadow, different shadows, three mirrors. So I rail up against myself on the weekly or the monthly. I'm faced with a part of myself. So when I'm faced with that and I'm tied up and I can't believe my latest one, um, if I haven't said it on the drop-ins, was my daughter was accepted to Berkeley and she chose not to go. She chose to go to Gonzaga because of the major and because so she could go to the team. And my type A overachieving self was like devastated. I was, oh, I was devastated. It's funny now because I've healed it and I've worked it, but man, and what happens every once in a while is I'll get a wave or a whiff and I get the wind knocked out of me. Like, like she's not going to be okay. <laughs> she's not going to Berkeley. Now my mind can laugh at that, really can laugh at that. But my body feels like we're all going to die. So when that whiff comes out of like, oh, what did she give up or whatever it is, I don't even know what the thoughts are. Oh, there's a, we're all going to die feeling that comes up and I am in it and I can go with that and believe it, except I have awareness. I have awareness that's like, that feels true, but it's not true, Kim. I know that feels true, but it's not true. I, I, we could go there. We could spend like hours there and you'll be wiped out from that pain body, but it's not true. So the capacity of our ability to be thinking all of these thoughts and be so enraptured in a pain body. And I use that example because all of us can agree of the ridiculousness of that. But maybe I should use the example of my kid's not home and it's 2 a.m. What mother's not going to go into a pain body spin when she was supposed to be home by midnight? This is not my daughter, by the way, but I have different, <laughs> I have different scales of worry, right? We all, we all have different things. So at 2 a.m., when you've got that child dead on the side of the road and your thoughts are convinced, do you have the capacity to know that that's not true. 99.9% is not true. Because you've built conscious awareness to know when you get wrapped up in a pain body, in interference, or if you're an empath, you might feel someone's negative thoughts and you might be fighting defending yourself in your head. And you don't even know that you're defending yourself empathically with this other person's energy. Either way, do you have enough capacity of awareness to be like, oh, look at me. I've been chewing on their field and they've been chewing on my field. And this has been going on for days leading up to seeing them. Interesting. So what do we do with that? 
Do we tell ourselves, oh, I'm going to love this person and have a happy-go-lucky weekend with them? Well, that might not be possible if they got a bunch of stuff in their field that's got them chewing on you. Happy-go-lucky and rainbows and bunnies may not be in the cards. But what might be in the cards is staying so true to the present moment, using the violet flame to transmute the interference and the pain body and trusting that you can maintain your own peace within yourself. Sitting so deeply at the eye of the storm that you're not going to get pulled out of yourself into the pain body into the interference, into the lineage pattern. So what is a lineage pattern? We can talk about my example from the PT with my body as I go on about, oh, my fascia and my back and my ribs and my joints and all of these beliefs I have about my body. That's straight from my lineage. I grew up with my mom talking about her back and injuring this and having to go to this. I mean, I started on a chiropractor young because I was at a chiropractor at a very young age with my mom, right? So there's a lineage tradition of my body is broken. It's so deeply embedded in there. So if there's a lineage belief, that's going to have even more magnetism. Remember, about 95% of the karma that we're playing out right now is lineage karma. It's your mother or your grandmother's thoughts. It's your grandfather's war that you're still fighting. It's not even yours. So those negative thoughts may be ancient thoughts. They're probably not your thoughts. So what is it like to have negative thoughts and to at some level be able to start to create the space between you and those thoughts such that you can be like, yep, that's bullshit. Even though I do think that, I know it's bullshit at some level. It's not true. I don't know what is true, but that's really negative. And I'm a soul that lives in love. So it's probably not true. Just starting there. Neutralizing. Is my body broken? No, it's actually functioning quite well. Creating the distance from that lineage belief system, those lineage, a belief system is a, is a, is a bunch of thoughts that have gotten so ingrained that they're just like housed within us. They're wired into our mental, into our brain. The body chemistry has been wired into our neurotransmitter receptors and hormone receptors. So physically a lineage belief system is wired in. We have lineage belief systems around hormones We have lineage belief systems about our capacity, about our worthiness, about scarcity, whether we're enough, whether we have enough. Talk to people who were raised by people in the depression. Deeply embedded beliefs that get passed from generation to generation. I mean, the egg for you was formed in your grandmother's body. So what do we do with those? We come into the present moment, into the space where there isn't thought. And we allow ourselves to determine, what do I want to even think about this? And in that moment with my body, it's like, no, I want to believe my body is capable. I want to believe that my body can heal. So this is not my thought, my body being broken. I'm going to transmute that now. And that's what we use the violet consuming flame for. It starts to work on transmuting it. We still need a neutral mind. We still need to be able to identify the pain bodies and the lineage. And we need to start transmuting that so we can get a little, so we don't have to do all the heavy lifting. So the violet flame will bring loving thoughts strong thoughts, 
wise thoughts, the threefold flame, divine love, pink flame, divine wisdom, golden flame, divine power, blue flame. And so now we go to the woo-woo aspect of this, which is that when you bring the violet consuming flame, you are bringing a legion of light into your space. And as you anchor it in, into your space, you transmute the karma, you transmute the lineage thoughts, you transmute the lineage um, emotions and energies and magnetism and karmic patterns. And so that needs to be activated every single thought, every single day in our bodies. It is not a one and done. It is an anchoring into our field. Every time I hear a negative thought, I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? Let's throw that in the flame. I never assume what my mind is thinking is my thought. I'm still horrified by some of the thoughts that come up. But I have a choice as to whether I want to believe that thought or whether I want to transmute that thought. And the more I transmute them, the more space I have from those automatic thoughts, the more pause and space. So I have lineage thoughts around beauty, around other people, around success, all of that. And I'll let that roll so I can watch it and transmute it and know that's not my thought. So when all of that stuff around Berkeley was coming up, I sent my kids to a Waldorf school that they didn't even get grades, right? My belief and my care in the world is the development of the human holistically. But I have a whole lineage around succeeding and achieving that really was my survival mechanism as a child. That's how I got out of hell was being smart. So when those thoughts come up, I'm honoring them like, oh yeah, Ooh. yeah, you had to achieve in school in order to not be dependent in this crazy world. I honor it. I honor the negative thoughts and the fears. Whether I understand where they come from or not, I don't need to analyze them and determine who they're from and where I got it and where it came from. That is a loss of prana and it's completely unnecessary. Although if it helps some people, great. But I honor it enough to feel it and to know it's here and to be loving enough to transmute it because I just don't need those thoughts anymore. They're not me. It's not what I believe. So next week, we're going to do some work on our thoughts. And if you can spend the next week really examining what thoughts are taking up space in my mind, in my body, in my consciousness, that's really keeping me from that alignment with myself. All right. Many blessings, you guys. Namaste.